Hello class, I just wanted to take a quick minute and go over 3M again for anyone who wasn't in my CPT coding class or isn't familiar with how to use 3M. Here is the first screen that you should get when you log on, this patient information screen. Move it to the top so hopefully you guys see the same thing that I'm seeing. So what you want to do at this first screen is pick the gender and unless you're coding a gender specific chart like a obstetrical patient or a prostatectomy or something where the gender is important you can pick either same with age unless you're coding something that's a newborn a pediatric or you know an alzheimer's patient something that is age specific then you don't have to worry about the age just put a random age so we're going to put 35 Admit date and discharge date you need if you're going to code an inpatient. So we get to inpatients in this class, I think in week eight. Um, I think it's week eight. So when you get to inpatients, we want to pick the DRG finder. For outpatients, outpatient hospital, you want the APC finder. If you just want to look up regular codes, you can do the ICD group, CPT, and HCPCS. So that's the one I'm going to pick right now. So I'm going to select that, and it, you see it automatically populated my um, date. So next, hit continue. So here is where you enter your diagnosis, and you can see it says primary diagnosis. Now, if this was an inpatient, we would see admitting diagnosis, and then the next screen would be principal diagnosis. So primary diagnosis, you know it's an outpatient or a physician office clinic. So let's just give our patient um, pneumonia. So you just type the term just as you would in the book, and now I'm going to pick one for pneumonia. And now it's asking me if it's a specific type of pneumonia. Is it neonatal, aspiration, bacterial, hospital acquired? And if you roll over these, you can see that it brings up information. So we're just gonna pick continue list. And then I'm just gonna pick unspecified. So now it's asking me if the patient also had influenza. So we would look at our documentation. We're gonna say, nope, our patient didn't. So I'm gonna hit no. And now it's asking me if my patient had any complications. So let's just say that our patient was had pleural effusion and then no more complications. Now it's asking me if the patient had any of these things. Were they a tobacco user? Were they exposed to tobacco? We're going to say no. Now it's asking me if there were any procedures done. So let's say because we had pleural effusion that we did do a thoracentesis. So I'm going to pick a nine here. And now it's asking me, was there guidance used? We're going to say no. And let's just say it was just the left side. So we're going to pick unilateral. Now it's asking me again, were there other procedures? So this is the exact same screen we saw before, except for the thoracentesis is no longer there. So we're going to pick no, no more procedures. And now it's asking me for PCS coding, we need to know if fluid was obtained or not. So let's say it was, so we're gonna go down here, drainage. If fluid um, was not obtained, then you can see our root operation would be inspection, not drainage. And then I said left, so we're gonna pick left. And then we're gonna come over here and hit continue. And let's just say, no, they didn't leave a device in. Okay, so there's our codes. J189, J91.8, our CBT is 32554, and your PCS. Now, in outpatient coding, you shouldn't need a PCS, but some payers or some facilities do require both. That's typically not the case, but in 3M, you can bring up both. So, 32554 is what we have. And procedure in PCS. Again, that's only used for inpatient coding, so it's not required for this class unless you're coding the inpatient chapters. 
which are chapters five and eight. Other than that, you do not have to report the PCS codes. I just wanted to show you how to go through all of them. So when you're all done, you hit continue. And it brings up any edits. So you can read these edits. So it's just asking us if, if there was tobacco use or exposure, we could also code that. So when you're all done, you, you don't see any additional codes. There's not any edits. Then we're gonna hit next patient. The one thing I do wanna show you too here is remember all our coding references. So we have the references up here that HA Coding Clinic and the AMA CBT Assistant are like your uh, how-tos, if you will. The experts on coding answer questions all around the nation on different coding topics. So those are both listed here. The nice thing about 3M is you can also right-click on a code. So I'm going to right-click on this and see if there's a reference. So you can see that there is. A coding clinic. So I'm going to click on the coding clinic for that code. And it's telling me these are the choices I can pick. Hopefully, you guys can see that. So let's go look at the third quarter acute exacerbation of COPD with pneumonia. So if I had coded J44.1 or J44.0, this would be important to know. So the question is, so again, a coder wrote in from somewhere in the country about this. What are the diagnosis code assignments for an acute exacerbation of COPD with pneumonia? Is it appropriate to assign code J44.0, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with acute lower respiratory infection, and code J44.1, COPD with acute exacerbation, and the code for pneumonia? So the coding experts at the AHA wrote back, yes, it is appropriate to assign both codes, J44.0 and J44.1, either may be sequenced first based on the reason for the admission with code J18.9 pneumonia unspecified organism. So great tool. Remember to use the coding clinic. And again, it's nice that you can just come right here to the codes and right click to see if there is a coding clinic with that. So like if I go to the CPT code right there, same thing. There is something in the CPT assistant. So I can look at that. So if I click on that, you can read information from the AMA, the CPT coding experts. And then when you're done, you just click the X at the top right corner. And then when you're all done coding your patient, you write down the codes and hit next patient right here. And we're taken right back to our screen again. So again, APC finder for same day surgeries, hospital outpatients, DRG finder for inpatients. And it automatically puts you at the Medicare grouper, which is what you want. Okay, I hope this was valuable and I look forward to seeing you in class.